Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video we're going to be looking at the beginner's guide to software defined radio. Now you may be wondering to yourself what is software defined radio? Well it's a radio communication system where components that have been typically implemented in hardware like mixers, filters, amplifiers, modulators, demodulators and detectors are instead implemented by means of software on a personal computer or embedded system. So what kind of things can we do with SDR? Well we can listen to broadcast stations, we can listen to aircraft, ham radio operators and all, all the different modes that are supported we can also go ahead and listen to some medium wave radio stations that have been broadcast around the world we can also decode dab radio stations we can listen to emergency services depending on location and where you are and if it's legal or not and also we can receive things from satellites like weather faxes and transmissions from the ISS and even some kind of digital modes now they're just a few things that you can do with an SDR there are plenty more things that you can do and if you want to go ahead and research I'll leave some links down in the description below now the actual architecture or the basic architecture of an SDR is like this that I'm showing here you have the antenna you have a low noise amplifier goes through a band pass goes through a couple of different mixers through another low pass filter and then it goes through two ADCs analog to digital converters and then it pops out as an I and Q samples now it's the software which is running your, on your computer which will actually take that IQ information and decode it and let you listen to the audio stream that's amongst all of that. Now the required hardware consists of three main items. Now the first item is going to be your SDR receiver. The second item is going to be an antenna and the third item is going to be a computer which is running your SDR software. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few different SDR receivers starting from the beginner range. Now this one, this one's made by Neuralec and this is based on RTL SDR. It's a very common base kind of chipset and you'll find them very cheap on eBay. It covers anything from 25 megs up to about 1750 megs and it costs around $20 or less. Now moving on to the next one. So here we have another one by Neuralec and this one is the NE SDR. SMART or SMART. It has the same frequency range and it also has a TCXO. Now the TCXO basically stands for temperature controlled oscillator. What this means is as the temperature rises within the device itself most electronic devices get warm as they're being used or worked hard uh, the oscillator, standard oscillator, would start to drift slightly. Now with a TCXO, which has a rating of 0.5 parts per million, you can be assured that it's going to stay on frequency as much as possible. Now these are a little bit more expensive than the previous ones. These are around $24 or less. I think for the extra buck, you're going to be getting a better performance. And this is a very good beginner's SDR receiver. So moving on to the NESDR Smart T, which you may look at it and think to yourself, it looks the same as the as the last one. Well, according to the Neuralec website, this SDR receiver was actually completely redesigned from the ground up. By doing that, they managed to create a reduction in the noise floor of around 3 dB and that's compared to the original SMART. Now this also has a frequency range of 25 megs up to 1750 megs and it also has a temperature controlled oscillator. One of the extra things that you're going to find on here it has a bias T of up to around 200 milliamps. The bias T allows a voltage on the antenna connection to power things like LNAs, low noise amplifiers and other devices which take low current which are connected between your SDR receiver and your antenna. Now this one's a couple of dollars more than the previous one that we saw, so this one is around $26 or less. Now moving on to the next one in my list, this one is the Neuralec NESDR Nano 3. It has the same frequency range as before, it has a TCX, so it has no bias T and it costs around $33. Now you may be looking at this and thinking, that actually looks quite small. Well it is, it is extremely small. And the whole reason for this is because it's pretty much designed to be extremely portable. It's it's so portable in fact that using the OTG cable you can go ahead and plug this into like an Android device or even a, a Windows tablet which is absolutely great for when you're out on the move if you want to have a little scan around of wherever you are. I'm hoping to do some videos over the summer where I'm going to be demonstrating this taking one of my Android devices out sitting up on some hills with a little small telescopic antenna and we're going to kind of 
see what we can receive when we're out and about. The perfect application to go with this would be something like SDR Touch, which you can get hold of on the Android App Store. Of course, this would also work with Windows and also work with Mac or any other SDR software because it's RTL based. Now, moving on up into the higher end of SDR receivers, we have the SDR Play RSP1A. Now, if you look at the frequency range on this, it goes from one kilohertz all the way up to two gigahertz. It has some front end filters, 11 of them built in, and it has a visible bandwidth of 10 megahertz. That means you can look at 10 megahertz at a time on the SDR software. Now this also has a TCXO and it also has a bias T up to 100 milliamps. Now if you look at the price, yes it has hiked up quite a bit, you're up at around $99, but don't forget you kind of get what you pay for, you're really paying here for the extra sensitivity and the fact that you can receive all the way from 1 kilohertz all the way up to 2 gigs without having to have an up converter. Now as we move into the last SDR receiver that I'm going to cover in this video, don't be alarmed, this is not not a complete list of all available STR receivers. There's absolutely loads of different makes and models out there and also a lot more expensive models as well. But this video is the beginner's guide to software defined radio and as a beginner you probably don't want to be spending a whole load of money to start off with. So this one is the Hack RF1. Uh, this is manufactured by Great Scott Gadgets and there's been a few different revisions of this. You may have a look at the frequency range and see that it does one megs to six gigs. And that is quite amazing because that opens up so many different opportunities and hacking and receiving things that you can do. This has a visible bandwidth of around 20 megahertz and it also has a TCXO all rated at zero. 0.5 parts per million. Now the TCXO is optional on this device, it just costs about another $10, but you do get the bias T up to 50 milliamps at 3.3 volts. Now the cost of this is around $300, which is quite an investment when it comes to SDR. But what you also get with this is the ability to transmit. That's right, it's half duplex, so it means you can't transmit and receive at the same time, but you can transmit. So let's just go ahead and take a look at a couple of SDR receiver add-ons that you might be interested in. So if you remember the SDR receivers that we looked at at the beginning of the video, they had a starting frequency of 25 megahertz. So what are you going to use if you want to listen to anything below 25 megs? Because below 25 megs is where you find all the HF amateur radio transmissions going on, which is actually quite interesting. Well, you're going to need one of these. This is what you call an up converter. This up converts the frequency by about 125 megahertz. This particular up converter is manufactured by Neuralec and it's called the Hammer Up. Now, it only costs around $40. So if you put that together with a, a $25 SDR receiver, so for about $65, you can have a complete SDR setup. Now let's take a look at one other add-on. And this last add-on that we're going to be looking at is an antenna ballon. Now this is a 1 to 9 ballon. What it does is it matches an unbalanced antenna to your balanced feed line from your SDR receiver. Now this is particularly useful for when you are connecting long wires or random length of wires or you want to create a dipole. It has a connection on the end the gray part that you can see there and they're spring loaded so you can just get a piece of wire pop them in and spread it out as high as possible in the air and you can use this antenna ballon. Now while we're on the subject of antennas let's take a look at a few different types of antennas that you may be interested in getting. Now as you can see on the screen here we have the standard cheaper SDR receiver and they more than likely will come with something like this a little magnetic based telescopic antenna. While these are quite good to start off with and maybe quite useful for receiving radio broadcasts and anything from around the two meter handband or the 70 centimeter handband even broadcast radio and maybe some airband it's not a particularly great antenna in general now while these antennas are quite small and lightweight and easy to set up they're not specifically tuned and you're going to get a rather diminished range so please don't base your experience or your first experience on SDR with one of these antennas 
To get the best out of your SDR receiver, you're going to need a tuned antenna or a multi-band antenna. Let's take a look at a couple of different antennas which might be useful to you. So the first antenna that we're going to take a look at is the Discone. Now the Discone has been around for many, many years and it's very popular in the SWLing community. The pros to this is that it can be resonant on many bands which means you can have just one antenna to receive a whole range of different frequencies and receive them well. The cons is that it has to be mounted outside or you could actually mount it in the loft. If you mount it outside way above the house you're going to get optimum performance with this type of antenna. Now the next type of antenna we're going to look at is a vertical antenna. Now these can be quite compact, they can be resonant on specific bands, for example 2 meters and 70 sems, and they can also come with a very wide band receive. The cons on this yet again, you have to mount it outside or mount it in the loft. As with the disc cone, the higher the better. Now if you can't get yourself an antenna outside, then you can also take a look at the antennas which are designed for cars, or otherwise known as mag mount car antennas. The pros to this, you can mount them on a car, put them on a window ledge, biscuit tin, but the downside is they're not going to be as good as an outside antenna. You can buy these in a multitude of different frequencies that they support, so just check before buying that it covers the frequency that you want to receive. So most of those antennas that I've talked about already are mainly for around 100 megs upwards. So what about if you want to listen to below 30 megs or the HF bands? Well, this is where you're going to be constructing and building your own antennas. You don't have to go ahead and buy one. You can actually make them yourself. It's easy. It's just using a piece of wire. Now, if you have a look at this diagram, this is what is called a shortwave sloper. You can see the house there on the left. You've got the coax coming from the receiver going up to a 1 to 9 ballon and then that goes off to an antenna wire which then just goes off at an angle down to a mounting post now this is a very good type of antenna for receiving anything between one kilohertz all the way up to 30 megs so go ahead get yourself a reel of wire build one of these so here we have another type of wire antenna design now as you can see here this one is way above the house roof line and it's actually completely horizontal you can see there that the feed line goes out up to the antenna it's completely flat along to uh, an insulator at the end and then you have the support pole don't forget if you look in the bottom left hand corner of that diagram you can see a ground lead which is quite important when you want to listen to HF having the outer part of the coax going to ground will greatly enhance your receiving capability now the type of this is called a long wire it's great performance on HF bands but the con side is you do need to mount it as high as possible so you're probably going to need some help with a friend now you can go ahead and buy these already made on eBay you'll get a really long piece of wire with a ballon that's already made and you just attach your cable to it or you can be a bit more creative and go and make one of these yourself it's very very easy to do and there's loads of instruction videos and documents on the internet on how to calculate the lengths for resonant antennas so the final piece of the puzzle is going to be SDR software. Now this is the application which runs on your computer, whether you're running Windows, Mac, OS X, or even Linux, you should be able to find a package which runs on it. Now these three pieces of software that we've got shown here, uh, first we have SDR Sharp there in the middle, we have SDR Console version 3 on the left, and we have SDR Plays SDR Uno. Now if you're looking at a beginner's guide or a beginner's software, I would probably recommend to go with SDR Sharp. You can download that and connect it to your RTL SDR dongle with quite ease. There's no real complicated setup. The only thing that you need to make sure is to go ahead and download and install the correct drivers. Now installing the correct SDR driver is quite important. Now if you're going to be using one of those cheaper kind of dongles, then you're probably going to be wanting to install the Win. USB driver and there's a great utility out there called Zardig Z-A-D-I-G and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download it from it's quite easy so what you do you plug in your SDR receiver you select the device from the drop down list and then you select win USB the button below that will say install driver and you just click install driver 
You can then close that application and can then go ahead and open SDR Sharp and it should then recognize your device. So there we go, that's my beginner's guide to software defined radio. Now if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'll leave some links down there to some of the antennas and software uh, that I've been discussing in this video. I hope it's managed to help you out if you're a newbie to SDR, understand some of the concepts and the things that you're going to need. Anyway, if you haven't already, please like, please subscribe, and until the next video guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.